Well, I'm looking <laughs> no. at the chat. Everything looks, everything looks, everybody sounds like they're they're getting it. So everybody's sound is good. I'm hearing you well. I'm not hearing an echo. Um, All I right. Like laundry room backdrop. I'm going to be real honest with you, Lee. I the like acoustics that. in this laundry room are, are fucking incredible. You know, we, <laughs> that we brought in the uh, San Francisco Symphony Orchestra because they, they wanted to tape here because they were like, this is this is where we'll get the best album. I mean, you know, Mark Marin interviewed uh, Barack Obama in his garage. So <laughs> yeah. and, and proceeded to ask him zero questions that no. made him <laughs> yeah. in his garage is where that, softballs can be thrown very easily. <laughs> yeah, that, that made uh, made Obama even have to pause for a second and go, oh, how do I answer this one? Yeah, it was like. <laughs> This was really helping the machine go, wow, Obama really is a nice guy. No questions about the drone strikes. Or the Listen, the, the, or the, the machine needed a little propping up, all right? It was having a rough <laughs> time. And, you know, just a little, just a, just a, just a, here you go. Come on, buddy. You can do it. The machine needed a, you can do it, you know? It needed, the, the machine was looking for the cat poster where that says, hang in there. Episode 22, pew, 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 where the machine could use a little, you can do it. <laughs> um, well, how, let's, how was your holidays, buddy? It's going all right so far. Going all right. Yeah, yours? I mean, I'm not sleeping in the laundry room at my parents' house, but I'm doing all right. You know, I can't complain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I have a real live adult bedroom that I sleep in. I'm sure you do, buddy. That's what you want to call it. I'm sure it's great. Listen, man, the couch pullout is is incredible. I still want to sleep in a bunk bed that's made of two rail cars, and that's how I want to do it. I like my feet hanging over the edge. I'm not. I, I'm curious. I always said, listen, guys, don't change a thing when I when from the age of four. Just don't move a stitch. I I want all 3,700 stuffed animals where they were. I, I remember actually. Uh, unfortunately, all all the childhood stuff is gone. The the, the, the bed the bed that you know looked like a race car. Uh, I don't know what they did. I don't know who they got to tow that away, but that's gone. Um, <laughs> you bring a tow truck in for yeah. You got to get a tow truck in here to get that bed. Um, but I do remember this is probably 15 years ago. So I I come home and the a lot of the bedroom Holy, we I, lost you. Oh man, yeah, you cut out. Testing, testing. Is that what happens if you if the dryer goes on spin cycle? Does it mess with one side? <laughs> oh well, if that if that if that keeps happening, I can try Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet. But let's keep trying this for a minute. Uh, I might have just. Um... You still got me. Yeah, I still got you. That might be. That might be just. Um... Yeah, I think that's good. Let me let me check here. Um... Let me see. All right. Yeah. I, I, I Talk for a sec. Testing, testing, check, check, check. Continued joking about childhood beds. <laughs> how, how did that sound? It sounded great. And we're not going to, um, I, I, I don't want to edit that out. <laughs> 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 um, all right. Well, yeah, so you're hot. Okay, let me just make sure. Okay. So, did you, so, other than being your parents for the holidays, what do we want to discuss first? Talk about this fantastic stimulus plan? Let, let's let's get into this amazing stimulus bill. I'll let you uh, I'll let you go first on it, but uh I have I have plenty to add. This could this could easily if we if we really dig into the stimulus bill, this could be the next three shows, I think. I mean, I've been talking about this stimulus bill for the last like week or two on my show. And so Trump signed it yesterday, which is funny to me because he talks tough about the $2,000 thing, which I was like, man, Trump is a jackass, but if he wants to give everybody two grand, I'm in, you know, like, well, I don't care. well yeah. And the, the other hilarious thing about the $2,000 thing is, yeah, oh, I'm all for it by the way. But, uh, his people were involved in, in negotiating this thing all along, like Mnuchin right. and everyone. So really 
they they had already Trump had already been involved through his people in this negotiations for whatever it is six hundred dollars, and then he still decided to be like six hundred dollars. No, I need two thousand. Why I never? And everyone's like, you fucking knew all along, right? Well, I just got this in the chat. The House just passed the two thousand dollar payments apparently. So they there was such yeah, but the Senate would have to right. There aren't a lot of the Republicans. Aren't several Republicans saying we'll never pass two thousand dollars? I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. But the most curious thing to me, obviously, I hope everybody gets two grand because six hundred dollars is literally throwing pennies out of your car, like throwing money at people out of your Lamborghini and then letting them scurry around like it's a half-eaten hot dog and going, "There you go, assholes, chew on that." Um, right, and like the. It's you know, a two thousand dollars is a lot of money to a lot of people, especially the struggling struggling people in this country. I get that. At the same time, it is still a giant fuck you to all Americans who are struggling out there because a lot of countries are guess what, just covering lost wages. Like oh, yeah. several, I don't have the list here anymore, but it's like France is covering eighty five or ninety percent. You know, Canada is covering most of the lost wa wages. Uh, like so many, even the UK is like eighty percent of lost yeah. wages. The US is zero, zero. zero. <laughs> I know, and this is what we have to fight. So it's like. The thing that was so funny to me when Trump did make the $2,000 claim last week, which was like hilarious. And he said crazy things about, you know, he pointed out all the ridiculous stuff in the bill, which I'm like, Hey, good for him. Good for him. But then it was so how quickly both parties were like two grand for these slugs. No way. It was hilarious to me how both parties were so against it. Um, and Wait, the, the, hold on. I thought Nancy Pelosi was like, Oh, 2000 sounds great. She said that kind of, but then the media, like other like democratic insiders, whatever would come on MSNBC and go, Oh, the American people are too resilient to need $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, every, you know, a third, literally the latest numbers are one out of every three Americans has had trouble paying bills or paying for food in the past couple of weeks. One out of every three adults, it's 70 million adults have had trouble paying bills. And uh, yeah, I love the idea that like, uh, well, they, you know, they just have it too easy. Listen, they'll get lazy if they had, if they're able to pay their rent, then that's just lazy. Just print a wallpapers of hundred dollar bills like Steve Mnuchin and his and his gold digger wife did. Like when they just printed, they were they just holding. Oh, yeah. They went to the, money. yeah, they went to the treasury and held up the sheet. Yeah. Just go to the treasury and get a get, get a couple of sheets of money. You'll be fine. I don't know what the big problem is. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, how much for those sheets of money? Oh, just ten cents. We're redoing our kids' bedroom, and we <laughs> wanted wallpaper of actual hundred dollar bills. Do you have those? We saw the Mnuchin had them, and that just looked. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, his, his race car bed is probably like a fucking you know high end Tesla or some shit. Porsche. It, no, his race car is a Lamborghini. His child <laughs> sleeps in, and they bought two of them to give the kid a bigger bed and molded them together. That's what they did. Um, like, yeah, well, one of the one of the kids is celebrities. I don't remember which one it was. You know, like it was Britney Spears of a kid. It was like it was like one of these like four year olds of a celebrity where they got him a uh, whatever the real all um, borderline real like Hummer for a child is. So that they could ride around the yard, but it costs like eight grand or something. It costs more than a regular car. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, the the obscenely wealthy, they really, they really have their fingers on the pulse. I think they that's what we're learning through the stimulus is how much they really get it. You know, um, <laughs> they really they feel our pain. I mean, my favorite was uh, when Paris Hilton, and this is within the past year, uh, tweeted out, my, my dogs love their doggy mansion. Literally, it is a three story. You should Google a photo of this thing. Literally, it's three story doggy mansion with like and she takes the photo and one of the dogs is out on the balcony of its third floor looking out like oh. you're like, did you did you really just tell people in the world that you have this this is the most fucking <laughs> i mean is that worse than just setting homeless people on fire or like what like what is where does it land like it's it's right up there right it it, it might be worse than yeah i think most homeless people would probably be preferred to be set on fire I mean, it's 
you watch this stuff and you're like, America is, ha not is, has gone insane. Like America, on the whole, is is literally in in a clinically diagnosable psychosis that is just like I, I can't. It's 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 yeah. It, this country well, is insane. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just sociopathy, and it's and and it. It. I mean, it, it's coming from a place that 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 is what's rewarded in our society. I mean, these people are still held up. You know, Bezos is on the cover of magazines. These people are still held up as what we should all seek to be or seek to emulate. And they're fucking sociopaths. We have a system that actually, like if you sat down and said, I wanted to create a system where sociopaths rise to the top and rule over things, you couldn't come up with a better system. You couldn't <laughs> devise anything that causes sociopaths to rise to the top as effectively as our late stage capitalist system. Uh, yeah. And what crushes can, can also included in this system. Can we crush decent people? Is that, can we make sure that they get crushed, not just pushed aside or not taken care of, but vehemently crushed like their dreams, their hopes, um, activists. Can we crush them? Can we just lose, like just suffocate their hope with our sheets of hundred dollar bills? <laughs> that we print for our doggy compounds. Can we do that? Well, we'll laminate them in hundred dollars bills and then they'll, they'll be off to the, to the, you know, heavens in, in a good wrapper. <laughs> good. <laughs> they'll be able to use those in the afterlife, like the Egyptians with their uh, gold in the tombs. Well, let me ask you this. Since I guess this is kind of our government secret segment number one, <laughs> discussing simulus lies. <laughs> um, <laughs> last government secrets before the end of the year. <laughs> 2020 relapse. Um, I thought you were going to say before the end times, but end of the year is fine. Same thing. 2020 is the end of end times. This is it. This is society. When 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 the stroke of midnight hits uh, Thursday, bye bye, folks. It's over. <laughs> we're punching out. <laughs> I, I I used to have a used to my stand up routine. I used to tell a joke. I still think it's true though. Uh, there was all the hype going into 2012 as to the Mayan calendar said that was the end of Earth, 2012. And I said, "Is it possible that was a recommendation?" <laughs> they were like, "Listen, once you get to 2012, just fucking tap out because it's ugly. It's getting ugly. All right. Once you have dogs and sweaters and kids on leashes, it's just time to call it quits." We've seen the future and the next eight years after 2012 only get really bad. So I would punch out in 2012. Um, well, let me ask you this of the, of the, what we've seen of this crazy stimulus bill, what we've talked a little bit about it before, but what is, what stands out to you? Yeah. Like so insane thing that they've hidden in there or whatever. Well, right. So yeah, Trump was like, I don't like all the pork, which of course is horseshit. He just knew that would play well. Um, right. but there, there is the real kind of pork. Like there are, I, I thought I read that it was 64 pages, but whatever, several pages at, le at least, maybe it is 60 on, uh, tax breaks for racehorse owners, uh, which I, you know, I would be less angry if there were 60 pages on how we, it's now okay to eat racehorses. I, <laughs> I would be more okay with that than now. You, you got to be hungry. You can't just do it out of spite. All right, it's got to be. You got to be hungry. Gee, but, it, it's good thing that that horse racing isn't like I don't know a sport of wealthy people. You know what I mean? It's good thing it's not perceived that way as only rich people do it. You know what I mean? It is. It is. It is, it is a sport of the working class. Um, I hope I hope the tax breaks also apply to the uh, the dressage horses, you know, that Mitt Romney owns, the dancing horses, because uh, those are those are equally important to our livelihood as Americans. Because I mean, if we don't take care of the 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 racehorse owners, I mean, they're the backbone. I mean, if that's not an essential worker, I don't know what is, Lee. I mean, <laughs> really, it's like, and there better be protections for polo horses because polo horses do not feed themselves. I hate to break this to you, but they do not feed themselves. And if I can't take a helicopter from my polo horse grounds to my race horse grounds and I, and I have to pay taxes. I mean, this is a monstrosity that just needs to end. I just can't, 
you yeah, know. it's yeah. Uh, no, it, 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 so that like, we can agree that's not pork. That that needs to be in this relief bill. Uh, but then there is just, I mean, m- half or most of this bill is giving money to what they call democracy promotion projects. Uh, which is the most <laughs> wonderful euphemism I've ever heard. These various, uh, uh, you know, uh, operations to create regime change in countries or destabilize them. Uh, there's like three, you know, there's like billions of dollars given to, or or hundreds of millions given to, uh, you know, create riots in Hong Kong. There's three billion dollars to Israel, uh, Israel's military. That, which is on top of the th- over three billion dollars given to Israel's military in the defense bill, so it's like, yeah, Israel's military was really hurting. You know, they were having they were having a rough time. They couldn't compete with the rocks being thrown uh, from the Palestinians, and so they they needed they, they need the money. They need them. They've been they've been walking around with a tin can. You know, could we get some more help? Well, Lee, look, we've all seen the video footage of the Israeli army and coincidentally racehorse owners lining up for miles getting food at food banks. We've all seen that footage. So sit, sitting there on the horses in the line there on horses, on horses, you know, needing food. I mean, so like we've all seen the footage. So something had to be done. I mean, I, I really hope in this 5,500 page stimulus bill is some type of provision for for yachts for people that own yachts because i can only imagine what they're going through right now oh those poor people in yachts is in the yacht in line with the cars at the food banks is because they got to get out and push you know it doesn't it doesn't have an engine so i saw a yacht owner who has a helipad and he was saying he might not be able to afford to keep the helicopter on his yacht. I mean, I don't know what the, what's left. I mean, what what kind and, of a side are we going to have? Yeah, and and then how do you hold your head up when you meet your friends or whatever? Uh, like you know, when you're having the the the, the cocktail parties with the uh, 700 bottle of uh, 15 year aged <laughs> scotch. Uh, well, I, you know, it, it, like look, guys, I've had to I've had to ground my helicopter uh, for weeks now. What I mean. First of all, there's probably going to be, I mean, this, this is a sad reality. We're going to have to really pay close attention to. There's going to be people probably having to sell the yachts with the helipads for smaller yachts. I mean, now what if you're, I mean, we're, we're really going to operate it. I mean, you're going to look me in the eye and tell me we're going to supposed to operate as a society with people who have yachts that don't have a helicopter. What a fucking animal. If you have a yacht without a helicopter, you're, you're living, you're an animal. You're like yeah. a rat. I mean, I don't uh, know. Yeah. It's, it, it's just, I mean, what are you going to take public transit out oh, to your yacht? Yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, and then there's, there's literally, there's literally, I, I posted a photo of it. One, there's literally yachts where you have smaller boats that park within the yacht. <laughs> so it's, it was like, I'm sorry to hear you're on rough times. Excuse me while I park this boat inside my boat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have the Russian dolls of yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I know. I mean, but I mean, th- again, though, are they supposed? How are they supposed to get out to their yacht in some sort of like dinghy, like a savage refugee or something like that? I mean, they're supposed to have a boat go inside of a boat. Yeah, I mean, it's the only way. I mean, uh, they they tried catapults for a while, but it was a lot of there were a lot of uh, billionaires that would just get splattered on the deck of various ships. So, well, I hope they tested it with a regular person first. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, they, they would send four or five regular people into the side of the ship before they decided it was ready. Right. Well, thank God. I mean, you hose it. The thing is, the thing that's good about most yachts, you can hose off regular people blood really easy. You just spray it down <laughs> and it is fantastic. And that's where they need the tax breaks because hosing down regular oh, yeah. blood, blood that you threw in a catapult, that's not free. Uh, yeah, blue blood is far thicker. It's far harder to to, to hose off. So yeah, I, I, it's it's really the only way. It's it, you got to you got to try it out with poor people. Um, but so yeah, there's a, a two thousand uh, dollars. Even if these two thousand check dollar checks go through, even if you add that money to the tw- to the twelve hundred from before, uh, you're still talking roughly eleven dollars a day since the beginning of the shutdowns, the beginning of the lockdowns. Eleven dollars is what. The, the American people are uh, are are due deserve uh, while billions are given to democracy promotion campaigns overseas, um, and of course I'm, I'm sure you've talked about the uh, four trillion over four trillion dollars funneled to Wall Street. 
uh, it's, it, it, it's unbelievable numbers that are being, but you know, this, this, this isn't like a, 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 a whoopsie or a, whoa, this is crazy. It's like, this, this is why they got into office. This is why they went there in the first place. This is why our system was set up like this. It is a money laundering machine. Only you cut like, out again. What it's been. I always cut out when I get angriest. <laughs> and now you're back. <laughs> Uh, it, it, there's a little there's a little anger meter on my screen and it just meh, frizzes yeah is it like one of those like dui things you got to blow into it and then so if you blow too much anger then it, it throttles the wi-fi is that what happens <laughs> yep yep but you were saying about the 11 dollars a day which yeah um, and, and i was just the the conclusion of that is that meanwhile they've funneled of course trillions to wall street in the first stimulus bill more go to these programs in the second one and uh it, and that's why these people are there that's why these politicians got into this for the most part it's why they uh it, it, it's why this machine exists it is a it's a giant money laundering machine is really what it is oh it's it's unbelievable and the fact that we have to fight, I mean, $1,200 was a slap in the face back in April, right? That was, that was like, what? 1200, that's the best you're going to give us. So then they come back with half of that. So it's, it's half of a shitty deal. And then now there has to be this big fight over 2000, which yeah, 2000 is better than 600. I'm sure it can help a lot of people, but again, it's nothing. It's, it's $11 a day, especially when you talk about the people who probably are anywhere from three to nine months behind on rent or yeah. mortgage like so 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 i mean and and you have to just like i know some people like i just called my my mortgage company and said look you got to just put a freeze on my mortgage and some of the mortgage companies said okay but just individuals have to kind of fight and claw to make these deals and then you're talking about of course in the stimulus bill there's not rent there needs to be rent forgiveness no we're just going to push the stay of execution 30 days so instead of getting evicted right. uh you know sad this coming saturday or whatever you're going to get evicted you know in a month right because oh. if, if someone couldn't pay their rent at the beginning of this thing what are the odds they're then able to pay what eight months nine months of back rent all at once like grand <laughs> i mean it's crazy it's like so if they're if, if they're not going to just give us pay people's rent. Um, and just, again, that, that $4.25 trillion that gave Wall Street, that should have just gone to pay everybody's rent, which would make the landlords whole and everybody else. Or like it, or like you say, we shouldn't be getting $2,000 right now. We should be getting five to six grand. Like there, that could maybe get knocked down some of the rent, but instead it's like two grand at best. Well, and the, and, and the way, another way you could do this, which some countries have, like Denmark, is you say to corporations, uh, we will, you know, basically bail you out, may help you get through this, as long as the money is going to keep all of your employees on. Right. Uh, so basically pay your employees and we will give you the money to do it. Uh, instead they like with the airlines, they started to do that. They said, uh, keep your employees on and we'll give you the money as long as you keep them till October. So then October comes around and most of those, you know, the, well, some of the airlines fired like half their employees or whatever. So it was like, it lasted for a few months. Oh, there's a bunch of examples of companies that got money from the government and still laid people off because we have no regulatory, anything. We have no nothing. We just give companies big companies and banks and wall street and corporations, we give them whatever they want and then they're never held accountable. And it's, it's preposterous. I mean, and you've got, what is it? What was the number I heard? 651 people have made over a trillion dollars. I mean, this handful of billionaires, right? You add up uh, the, the, the billionaires, uh, in the U S have added a trillion grand total to their to their wealth yeah. to their wealth in this during the pandemic during the pandemic yeah and we have to fight for two grand which is eleven dollars a day if it happens <laughs> and just just a quick reminder folks if you make forty thousand dollars a year in order to make a trillion dollars you would need to work for 25 million years 25 million years the more you know <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing too even people that are like doing well let's say they make even a millionaire who when they hear this, eat the rich and tax them. Oh man, they think they're part of the billionaire ruling class and they're not. And they don't realize how close they are. Like it's 
to make 40 grand, you're only, you, you're only 960 grand away from making 40 grand a year. You are $999 million away from becoming a billionaire. So if you right, make, right. How, yeah, how different it is. Yeah. You, you really should associate, if you make a million dollars a year, 500 grand, a million, somewhere in there, whatever, you should really be fighting for the working class because you're not that far away from them. I mean, you really aren't. And one big white financial wipeout, which some people have had to endure already, guess where you're going to be, you know? Well, and the the number of millionaires in America, just millionaires, not I'm not talking billionaires, just millionaires, it's, you know, it's like 500,000 or something, uh, which is, you know, still disgusting, but it's, a, that's a tiny percentage of of the number of people in America. So even if the millionaires were like, hey, oh, anything for the rich, give it all to the rich. Even if all of them were, none of them understood the plight of anybody having less than a, a million dollars. It's still been mean 99.5% of America or whatever, maybe more than that, uh, that, that, that should be fighting for uh, an actual sustainable society here. Yeah. It's, it's, and they don't, I, I, it's, it's the stimulus bill, you know, there, there's provisions for defense contractors. Like you said, there's all these countries that we're, they're giving, we're giving them money for freedom parades or whatever the fuck we're calling war now. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, like, here's, here's money for, for, for a democracy cosplay. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> We're doing a democracy cosplay. Um, but yeah, like 1.3 million, uh, $1.3 billion to the Sudan, like all these insane things. And, you know, again, Trump listed them off, which he knows exactly what's in there. He fights for these things. It's just a publicity stunt to get his, to tickle his base, you know, get him, them going. Right. He fights for these things. He, 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 Republicans fight for these things. You know, it's it, it like, you know, they're, they're calling it pork, but it, but they're not really when they say pork, they're not referring to uh, most of the military expenditure, which is the vast majority of that. Right. That's not what they call pork. They're called, you know, they're calling like bridges pork or like, uh, you know, uh, 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 having, you know, contracts going to a certain state. They're calling that pork, but they're not calling the trillion we spend on military. That's not pork. That's that's really we need that. Yeah, that's just we got that's just that's just the cost of doing business. That's just <laughs> the cost of throwing yeah. these democracy parades all over the world. I mean, that's just, that's just, we can't get around that. It's not, God forbid we stop spending that money and stop blowing up the world and the give the confetti, the confetti just, alone. Oh, the, the yeah. t-shirt cannons. Oh. I mean, they shoot that just like, yay. Oh. They just say freedom t-shirts. I mean, those cost money. I mean, the silly string. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah what's going on uh dressing up as furries or whatever they're doing i mean it's the, the glow <laughs> sticks it's amazing yeah yeah i know it, it is it is truly truly legit um well folks uh if you're just tuning in please hit the like button also uh listen if you're listening to government secrets on itunes or spotify or something like that give it a positive review give it a five star review share this out uh, cause we're growing the show. It's only, we've only, this is our 22nd episode, I think. Um, so almost listen. half a year of this. Wow. It is. We started in the summer. It is almost half a year. We've been doing this pretty. How do you feel looking back as the year winds down? We've done a, almost a half a year of gov seeks. Worst mistake I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, it was, it was really just a trick to, to get you to chat with me for an hour a week. So, <laughs> well, in this day and age, it's like, we could just have a fun phone call once a week laughing about all the bullshit. And we're like, why don't we just record it? <laughs> Here's not what most podcasts are just like, Hey, you know that thing? Like we used to just sit in the green room and fuck around. Let's just do that and record it and put it out there. Yeah, it was, they, they, they did that on TV. It was called Tough Crowd, and uh, it was pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, yeah, because it's funny. We've had regular phone calls just like, hey, what's going on? And we, we go into these stories without even knowing. It. We're like, did you fucking hear this, man? And we just <laughs> all worked up, and we're like, wait, save it for the show. Save it for the show. S save uh, it for the pod. You got to save it for the pod. Save it for the podcast. Well, I want to... Um, 
let's uh i want to talk about this since we since unless you have more about this fine stimulus plan you want to discuss i mean i think that's pretty much it i mean i uh, i i did a video where i listed more of the numbers going to which you know which countries and things like that but i i, I think it's all the same point uh is that you know this is this is going to create more wars around the world or create collapsed societies. I mean, if there's one time to maybe give a society a break, give a country a break, like the struggling people, it might be right fucking now in the middle of a pandemic. And in, instead, we're like, now is the chance to put our boot harder on their throats because a lot of them are sick and they don't even have a vaccine. And so we can just really hurt them now, really fucking lean in against Venezuela and Cuba and Iran and China and really just try and fuck them up. Uh, Cause you know, we're good people. Yeah. We're uh, it's, it's unbelievable when you read that stimulus bill or parts of that stimulus bill, first of all, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a mistake that they dropped a fifty five hundred page bill onto Congress and then said you got to vote in three hours. Yep. <laughs> that, that wasn't that's not that old game isn't like what how did this happen? Um, and Congress is like right now this is when I did all the intern in the back room. I don't have I don't have time to read things. Some lobby group should be flying me to Barbados on a private jet. I don't have time for this sort of nonsense. Um, and so they do that. And then you, they really have no idea. I don't, I mean, I mean, they, I don't know if they, it's like, I don't, I can't tell if they have no idea how much people are actually struggling and they don't give a shit or they're like, man, people are really struggling, but still a great opportunity to like <laughs> pack in a bunch of nonsense and cheat everybody and steal money and give it to our buddies. And like, it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean it's disaster capitalism, and it's uh, now now is a great chance to uh, to funnel money to the 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 people who are already rich. Because what are Americans going to do about it now? You know, they're uh, they should just be thankful for their six hundred dollars for their eleven bucks a day. They should be thankful for the beer and a half that'll buy them, uh, that'll get them through to the next day. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think most of them know most of them know how how much people are struggling, but. They just don't care. They just yeah. Don't I mean, Trump during this time, I, I don't think he's succeeded yet. But during this time, Trump has been trying to change the definition of poverty yet again uh, to decrease the number of people that get food stamps, that get food assistance. Uh, so it's like he and his people are trying to actually make it harder on uh, human beings in this country that are struggling. And something I covered on Redacted tonight this past week was that Joe Biden, if he wanted to on day one, without consulting Congress, it is in the president's power to change that, uh, the, the, the way they measure poverty uh, to something that's more reasonable because right now it's just, it's horrific. It's like for a family of three, if they make $20,000 a year, then they're do then that's considered doing fine or whatever. But it's like in most of America, you can't afford to get by with that, with that amount of money. Uh, and, and so he could change the way poverty is measured, which would immediately give more assistance to so many people, millions across America would have access to like public housing and food stamps and all this stuff. And, uh, and he could do it himself. Now he won't, of course, but he could. I mean, it's crazy. Like I've seen videos and stuff of people who are like working full-time jobs and, and then donating plasma to help cover extra bills. It's just insane. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, but I want to get into this gov seek because yeah. Um, I found this, uh, it came out in May in the wall street journal, this opinion piece. Um, and it was while they were doing the first, um, in, I'm sorry, in March, wall street um, journal, that's that, uh, leftist socialist rag, right? Oh yeah. It's all, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a union, a pro union, uh, <laughs> journal. Um, so, but what th that was interesting in this is it talked about, um, and we can go into this more cause we both understand it, but the title of the article, I'm going to do a screen share here is cause I want everybody to see this and, and it's wall street journal. So take it with a grain of salt, but, but, but the title is what I wanted to discuss, which is Obama's bad stimulus example. <laughs> so 
how can the government be this out of touch and do this horrible stimulus where they give all these people all this money? Well, Obama did it. Bush did it. They both they both did it somewhere in the neighborhood of one point four trillion dollars between the two of them um, to bail out the banks because uh, the banking crisis hit in September of 08 while Bush was in his his last days. Uh, and he gave a seven hundred billion dollar stimulus plan and then Obama gave close to a trillion dollars. Um, so it's I, I wanted to I wanted to show uh, about this. So. Um, the lessons of Barack Obama's 830 billion American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, in the wake of the housing meltdown and financial crisis, Congress passed the largest at that up until that point stimulus package in American history, and it was so great it every made everything better, right? Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> it did. Yeah, I mean, it fixed everybody's lives. I think totally. Um, so you would think passing that in 2009, 11, almost 12 years ago. That would have just, man, massive reform. We'd still be talking about it the way we're still talking about the New Deal. No, no. Um, the economic spark and job creation were supposed to appear almost immediately as money flowed into shovel-ready construction projects. When Vice President Joe Biden barnstormed around the country in 2010 promising a summer of recovery, that never came. Remember, there was no infrastructure. Like we were. That's what we all thought. Oh, we're going to put everybody to work with this infrastructure. Right. Never happened. And now right. we have a crumbling infrastructure. And, and like it, this, this exposed everything. So it, it, it's, it's uh, this, see, uh, let me talk about this. Well, right. And, and there are, they, they could have done it a different way in which you did create those jobs in which you did, uh, uh, you know, rescue the lives of, of millions of people. You could give them all jobs, uh, fucking creating electric charging stations or planting trees or some shit that would actually help the planet. Uh, and instead it, it, you know, they gave them to corporations and said, Hey, go, you know, do something with this positive for the world. But what do the tops of corporations do? They pocket the money. That's, that's their job. That's why they're there because, uh, a corporation is a totalitarian system that is uh, run by sociopaths. That's insane. I mean, I heard so many different theories of what could have been done. One economist said for the amount of money he was given out, they could have gone to everybody that was, that was like 55 years old who was working at a regular job and say, we'll pay you a million dollars to retire early. And you got to do two things. You got to buy a house or, and, or pay off your mortgage and buy a car because remember the, the house, the car market got crushed too. And all that. And this one economist was like, that that gesture alone would have done it. I talked to another accountant who said this, the amount of money they gave out, they could have given every working adult 70 grand. <laughs> 70 grand. And just said, pay off your debts. So the banks would have gotten their money eventually. They would have gotten their debt. Everyone would have paid off their credit card, their mortgage, their car loan, what student loan, wiped it all off, probably had some money left over to put back in the economy. And it would have, I mean- but instead, but the problem is that if you did that, you wouldn't have any poor people and without poor people, why does anyone work? Right. We all just work because we're like, I don't want to fucking be that. So <laughs> it's, it's the whole, we got to have a lot of poor people. Listen for this thing to go smoothly. Everybody, mm -hmm. there needs to be millions of people who fucking hate their lives, just hate them, just with a passion, just fucking uh, have no joy, and they can't hardly find food to eat, and they, they can't find uh, clothes that are clean, and that we need lots of that so the rest of us can just have a blast. Yeah, because again, I don't want to be one of the guys that gets catapulted into the side of a yacht, you know, so <laughs> I'm going to work. Listen, that's a good paying job, honestly. As long as you wear a helmet and bounce off the thing, you're fine. <laughs> um, one problem apparent from the start was that only about 15% of the money was used for roads, bridges, and other infrastructure projects. More than twice as much went to income redistribution programs such as Medicaid, food stamps, and extended unemployment insurance, or to green energy projects. Well, this is where Wall Street Journal is definitely pushing bullshit because it didn't. The money did not go to those programs at all. Or maybe it went to some. Remember the federally subsidized cash for clunkers auto trade-in program? That uh, that SOP to the auto industry did little to shore up employment or even the auto industry. University of Chicago economist Casey Mulligan calls. Well, the I love. Go ahead. The, this this guy calls the post 
uh, this economist calls the post-crisis downturn the redistribution recession. Uh, uh, well, they, yeah, I love how they just glaze over or they don't mention the fact that the Cash for Clunkers program was meant to take uh, the worst cars that were horribly creating tons of emissions, like more emissions than, you know, millions of other cars and uh, and get them off the roads. So it wasn't just like yeah, they're, they're like, listen, if, if the only reason to do this is to give people money. It's not it's not to actually, create, you know, have cars on the road that don't uh, fill the atmosphere with greenhouse gases at all. Oh, it's it's. <laughs> I mean, this this article does two things. One, it outlines the, the the many failures of the Obama administration and the stimulus plan, but also then it glosses over so much shit because it is still the Wall Street Journal, so it doesn't right. gloss over. It's not. It's 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 saying, and this is the part of the problem with this this Wall Street Journal piece is it's 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 saying, oh, the money didn't go where it was supposed to go, but it doesn't really talk about how. Yeah, banks walked away. It was a, it was a scam for banks. They just see like right. they just they always make it seem like it's some blunder, you know. Like boy, they just they didn't forgot they they didn't put the right stamps on the checks. They got mailed to the wrong place, and that memorable boom. Oh boy. Well, well, and even the even the the auto bailout, which a lot of people point to as you know, and Joe Biden certainly does point to as like this this massive success. We we bailed out the auto industry and we saved it. Uh, it's like, yes, the, you, you did save these massive auto corporations. However, the bailout could have been done in such a way that it gave the workers of those corporations like higher wages, uh, and treated them better. And like th there could have been requirements within it so that it went more to the workers rather than uh you know whatever it was gm or ford or whatever uh rather than them taking the money putting it in their you know corporate bank account and using it to you know i don't know grow their grow their operations or whatever but uh not really treating their workers any better yeah there's so many things these bills cause, like i would love to they, they always they always port you know put in all this awful shit that only helps corporations like and this is why you know the this the 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 progressives within the democratic party are so gutless. Like, why don't you jam in some shit for people? You know, why can't you, why can't, why can't, why can't anyone like, Oh, the last, the 11th hour we jammed in a provision to force, you know, Amazon has to go union, you know, just like, what, how did you do? Yep. Sorry. We forced it in. We knew everyone wouldn't read it. Like do the same thing. They, you know, like as Tulsi Gabbard said, when she didn't vote on this, she said, well, they, they gave us only, they didn't give us time to read it. So I voted against it. She's one of the few that's ever going to do that. Most people are just going to vote for it. So put some like, put some shit in there that like that's that actually helps people that all these dummies might actually vote for, and and miss, right. you know, like play right. things. And, and the people that make sure that even the progressives don't insert stuff like that into the bill, uh, it's like you know N N Nancy Pelosi's job is to make sure that real progressive stuff doesn't get in that you know forced into that bill. Uh, so, yeah, that's. <laughs> That is her job. But this article just goes on to say more nonsense about, but that's the thing I did want. I did want to talk about the, the Obama plan was going to do, there was no jobs program. There was no infrastructure. There was none of it. I mean, and, was, and there, yeah. And there, the, the wall street journal was lamenting that too much money went to green. What did they call it? Green jobs or something yeah, like that. And it's like, well, where did that money really go? It went to it went to big green corporations that, right. yes, might build solar panels or something. But like it could be you could have a bailout that's done in such a way that it goes to uh, green you know, industries and their workers. And it's like you must uh, hire this many, you know, 10,000 workers or whatever. And it, rather than it, 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 you know, this is the wealthy helping the wealthy. It's like, yes, you can, you can support uh, green energy companies and still make sure it only goes to the billionaires at the top of those companies. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how many things that bill could have done, especially as we look at it now. All these bubbles that had formed pr prior to COVID. There's a housing bubble. There's a student loan bubble. There's a car loan bubble. 
you know, there's a commercial real estate bubble. There's all these bubbles that were forming before COVID that are now even worse. Yep. And all of them could have been avoided had we um, had Obama and Biden actually done real reformative, not just like stimulus, you know, socialism for the for the one percent. Right. Like, just just think about how much better we would be faring right now in this pandemic, both economically and health wise. If Obama and Biden had put in actual universal health care, actual single payer uh, Medicare for all, if they had done that, you you would be seeing a completely different situation right now. I'm not saying everything would be solved, but it would be very different. It wouldn't be as bad. I mean, that's for certain because we'd be sitting there going, boy, thank God we had Obama for eight years. So when this crisis hit, we were really prepared for it, you know, and had they done that, they wouldn't have lost in 2016. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, I think a lot of things would have like, they would have had a different nominee. It wouldn't have been Hillary. If, if Obama would have done all these things that we thought he was going to do when he ran on his hope and change and thought, oh, he's going to be like FDR 2.0. Had he, rather than upwards of 6 million foreclosures happened, right? At least. I thought it was At even least. more than that. About 6 million that's 6 million families, right? That's 6 million people who lost their wealth, their whatever. I lost my home. It was, that was like going to be my retirement gone. It's gone. Um, so yeah. had saved all those homes and they had a jobs plan and an infrastructure. And, and we're like, boy, everything's like, we look around our country 10 years later and go, boy, there's solar panels everywhere. There's green energy. There's very few homeless. Uh, you know, there's, we would be sitting here when the pandemic would be like, wow, it's bad, but we're okay. Everybody's doing okay. Everyone's got free healthcare. Like you were saying, we could point to all these things and go, yeah, that's all because of Obama. And now one of the reasons this country is so awful, we can point to them and say, yeah, it's part of Obama. It's, it's the whole system is broken. I mean, it's <sighs> yeah. And, and with those foreclosures, those millions of foreclosures, uh, I, I think people people need to realize when they talk about that. I mean, in the foreclosures that will happen now and the evictions that will happen now, mm -hmm. that, you know, they, they love to say, oh, the, the people protesting, you know, someone breaks a window, that's right, violence, right? Someone broke a window, it's violence. Look at how violent they're being. It's like, okay, you know, uh, fine, if you want to call that violence, but uh, you also have to call uh, stealing someone's home and evicting them, that's violence too, uh, it is the, for that family, it's the equivalent of setting their house on fire. I mean, yeah. they're not going to have access to their house anymore. So what's the di fucking difference? Uh, it is the banks going around and basically setting fire to everybody's homes that they're, that they're stealing. Uh, so that is a form of, uh, uh, of, of violence by the fascist state, uh, to, to take people's homes. And it's like, all right, well, if you want to call that violence and you got to call this violence too. All right, this is a form of violence by the big banks who, uh, with most of these scenarios, trick people into, uh, you know, these subprime bullshit variable rate mortgages, uh, preyed on people because people aren't lawyers and don't read 10,000 page documents or whatever the fuck. And, and they knew they were doing it and they did it anyway. And then they went and gambled with those on Wall Street. And so, it, it is just straight up violence against people to steal their homes. And of course, when you foreclose on something, uh, foreclose on someone's home, the, 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 the ramifications of that uh, ripple throughout society, uh, like you were talking about your retirement, uh, but also, you know, people get divorced because they get kicked out of their house. People uh, lose, uh, are, are, you know, lose touch with their children and, and things like that because they get kicked out of their house. There's suicides because people uh, have their house and their savings taken away. 25,000 suicides are estimated to have been connected to the, uh, to the mortgage crisis. And that's probably a low count. Uh, so, yeah. They, I mean, it is, it's, it's straight up violence. I mean, dude, I mean, I got divorced and I, I can't blame it all on my foreclosure, but it certainly didn't help. <laughs> I mean, half foreclosure, what, half cocktail waitress in Miami, but no, it wasn't that it wasn't that <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but also you want to talk about violence. Like what's more violent, somebody smashing out a window, uh, at a protest or pulling down a, a, a you know, a Christopher Columbus statue or, somebody's family member dying because they didn't have health care, a hospital turning them away. Tell me that's not violent. That's no. not a violent fuck you. That's like, you're going to die. We, we can't make money from you. So we don't care if you die. Tell me about that violence. This, this society 
this government uh, perpetuates violence against its own citizens on a daily and all of these economic reasons that we're discussing. It's unbelievable. So uh, it, it's just preposterous and it, it should have been fixed by Obama. That's what he ran on. That's what so many, myself included, voted for. All right. I think he's going to come in and, and instead it's only worse. He's just added to the problem. And what he did, I mean, we could be like, oh, remember Obama, he fixed the water in Flint. He stopped the the Dakota Access Pipeline from happening. Man, he really stuck it to the oil companies and, you know, all this regulation. And now we've got green energy everywhere. And the banks have been regulated. He put bankers in jail like they did in Iceland. You know, oh, man, no, nothing. Nothing's yeah, happened. Zero, zero in jail for the for the uh, collapse of 2008. Zero. 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 Eric Holder went after essentially nobody. Nobody. I mean, they got some mid-level person, I think, for like stealing, you know, copy paper out of the break room. Or something. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. There were there were there were two scapegoats. It was Bernie Madoff, and there was like one uh, like Chinese bank in in yes. Manhattan that they claimed was like you know, oh, they did it. It was them, and and really, it was it it. it they were a nothing player in the mortgage crisis and it was just a way to have a scapegoat and hell, if you're going to have a scapegoat, why not make them Chinese? Oh yeah. Let's blame it on the China. Let's blame, let's blame the, let's blame the mortgage crisis on China. Oh, now we're going to blame coronavirus on China. Like what else are they going to blame on China? It's just, yeah, it's unreal. So that's, that's what I got, dude. I don't know if you've got more gov seeks, but uh, I, yeah, I, I have another one, but I don't know if we have time for it. Uh, I don't know if we want to dig into uh, one right now. Well, that's up to you. I, I think we, I think we have time, but. Okay. It's not, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it to like 10 minutes. It's not very long one. So, um, in secrets, final segment, beep, 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 lead cab, keeping it under 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> he better, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, so I, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, we don't, we don't want to wrap up an episode, by the way, I noticed we, we remembered to, we were going to start telling people what they are uh, at the beginning of the show. We did it for one episode. So we've really kept up with that. Um, but oh, what's, <laughs> what, what the topics were going to be at the beginning of the episode. Um, but <laughs> listen, it, it took us 17 episodes to start looking up what number episode it was. So yeah, we don't it's move. Good. We're like we're like a battleship. You know, we take a few miles to turn around. It's not a it's a it's 12 hours to turn around. This is the battleship of podcasts. <laughs> so actually, uh, yeah, so it, it's good to have it. We'll, we'll go back in history for this one. I always like when we have a little uh, little deeper history dive. Um, this has to do with and, and the relation to modern day is that uh, currently I think we're the the scientist uh, the nuclear clock the scientists have now put it at whatever it is 30 seconds to midnight which is midnight is nuclear armageddon and uh i think it's the closest it's ever been uh and and and, and of course you know uh trump pulled out of all these uh weapons uh deals with uh with the soviet union well former soviet union with russia and uh they love to say oh well look how look look what great buddies trump is with putin and meanwhile he's all the, the sanctions they've done have been far worse than under the Obama administration. The pulling out of the nuclear deals that Russia was a fan of. Uh, it just you go down the list. He's been worse to Russia. But, you know, that doesn't fit with the propaganda. So uh, so going back to the 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 nuclear, you know, when things were uh, kind of at their worst during the Cold War, when it, people really thought that like any day now, maybe nuclear weapons will rain down <laughs> and we'll be in the, the end times. And you remember the, the they were teaching the kids to get under their desks, which, yep. you know, would I'd definitely save you, I think, probably, uh, right? Absolutely. A grade school desk will prevent an atomic blast from reaching you. You are safe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, if, a, if, a, if the fire alarm goes off, several of the desks collapse, but collapse, but, uh, <laughs> um, but so here's some, so everybody knew that it was a, you know, there was the, the Cuban missile crisis, all this stuff, the standoff between Russia and America. And, but here's something I did not know, uh, which is truly fucking horrifying. Uh, so what the, uh, the, this is again from the the untold history of the United States. Uh, what little is known, what what is little known, is that Eisenhower 
had delegated to a theater of commanders and other specified commanders, including the Strategic Air Command and NORAD, the authority to launch a nuclear attack if they believed it was mandated by circumstances and were out of communication with the president. I mean, he, I'm sure he's easy to get in touch with, though. Uh, so basically, he said to all these commanders, you know, if you feel you need to fire a nuclear weapon, which will no doubt uh, end up in a tit for tat that'll probably wipe out the human race, just go for it. You know, if if I'm if the line's busy and you tried to call, just give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? If I'm fishing and I don't have access to a phone, press the button and nuke it. You know what I mean? When in doubt. When in doubt. Uh, but it gets even better. With Eisenhower's approval, some of the theater commanders had in turn delegated their authority to lower commanders under similar circumstances. Hey, if I can't get in touch with Eisenhower, I'm supposed to fire a nuke. Listen, you're below me. If you can't get in touch with me, you fire a nuke. Uh, and this subdelegation included commanders of numbered air forces, fleets, and navies, Thus, there were dozens of fingers on the triggers, if not more. Uh, according to Daniel Ellsberg, who at the time was an analyst for RAND, um, it, he discovered some of these dangerous circumstances uh, for uh, control of nuclear weapons at the Pentagon. And he said it was a doomsday machine on a hair trigger with delegation uh, down the ranks. And there were also, and it gets even better, as if that wasn't good enough, there were also no locks on a lot of nuclear weapons, uh, meaning that even more people without authority uh, could have had access to launching these nuclear weapons, nuclear attacks. Um, and during the next decade, they started the 50s and 60s, they started putting locks on these nuclear weapons so that at least you had to be one of the people that had access to it to fire nuclear weapons. But so like one of those bike shares in the cities, but like <laughs> nukes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that with nukes. Yeah. Uh, but no locks were put on submarine nuclear missiles until the <laughs> 1980s. Into the <laughs> 80s, a submarine commander could still just choose to fire a nuclear weapon, which many thought would result in kind of like the end of humanity. Not terrifying at all, Lee. Just really <laughs> makes me sleep well at night knowing that our leaders really are thinking big. They're smart people. They're not sociopath wing birds. I mean, literally, like, so Dr. Strangelove, I guess, was a documentary then? Totally a documentary. Totally Sorry. a documentary. Like, and in, in case you were wondering what the number of people that would die when this happens, uh, the Joint Chiefs of, Stra of, of Staff were subse subsequently asked to estimate the death toll for such an attack. Now, granted, they only measured the death toll of the other side. They weren't calculating how many Americans would die, or at least in this one, they weren't calculating how many Americans would die. So the, num the, the numbers were such. 325 million dead in the Soviet Union and China, another 100 million dead in Eastern Europe, a similar number, uh, number in Western Europe from the fallout, and up to another 100 million from fallout in bordering countries, including Finland, Sweden, Austria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Japan. And that's not including retaliation against the U.S. Uh, uh, so they, like, and throughout all of this, it seems like there weren't many people going like, are you fucking out of your mind? How about if, honestly, if this is the end result, we should just get rid of our nuclear weapons. Because even if they fire theirs at us and we can't fire back, it's still better than everyone dying. Like, I we, mean, the reality, the real, the reality is like, if any of these warheads are detonated, we're probably going to, even one of them is detonated. We're going to have a nuclear winter and it's and life on earth will eventually get extinct, extinguished anyway, let alone a multiple strike. If any of these, I mean, they're, they're like a hundred times as powerful as Hiroshima. So yeah, we shouldn't have uh, a thousand, no, thousands of times more powerful. Okay, yeah. great. Thousands of times more powerful. <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry, to, sorry to put you down there, Graham. Thank you. That makes me rest easy. So if one of them is detonated, it's over. So this like, we're going to retaliate. No, it's already done. So let's just get rid of all of them and stop living like short-sighted psychopaths. Yeah. Literally uh, want to eat their own heart because they're hungry. Like, I don't. How fucking uh, dumb is the human race? And I'm specifically Americans. Like, how dumb 
is the American brand of human. Like that species of human is the dumbest <laughs> or just yeah. Uh, I knew about the like hiding under the desk uh, stuff, but uh, here's here's the last thing I'll I'll I'll, I'll go into. Uh, I didn't realize that literally there were. Well, I'll just read this part. To an outside observer, it might have seemed that the Americans had taken leave of their senses in the summer and fall of 1961, as the nation con conducted a s extended conversation about the ethics of killing friends and neighbors in order to protect the sanity and secu security and limited resource in one's home fallout shelter. In August, and these are mainstream outlets. In August, Time Magazine published an article titled Gun Thy Neighbor, which going to, uh, which quoted one Chicago suburbanite saying they were gonna mount a machine gun on their fallout shelter, their personal fallout shelter, to keep the neighbors out if the bomb falls. Quote, I'm deadly serious about this. If the stupid American public will not do what they need to to save themselves, I'm not going to run the risk of not being able to use the shelter I've taken to the trouble to provide to save my own family. Literally, there were like articles about how, listen, have a gun with you in your personal fallout shelter so you can kill your, your friends and neighbors who try and get in to your shelter. Cause I'm proud to be an American <laughs> where at least I know I'm free. Yeah. America's not a sick society at all. None of this is, none of this is weird or abnormal or psychotic or violent or crazy. This is one of the few government secrets that literally was in the mainstream media. And it certainly was not a secret then, but I feel like it's forgetting our history makes it, you know, it becomes a secret. Oh, it is. It's well, that's, that's what America, we have, we have a historical recollection that lasts about 14 minutes. So it's America. God. So, um, yeah. Happy New year, I guess is what we're saying. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of similar to after nine 11 where they were telling people to saran wrap their houses. Do you remember that? So, yeah. so don't act like this is the 1960s and we've grown up or something like literally after nine 11, they were telling people like, Get plastic and staple it across your windows. You may suffocate because there'll be no oxygen, but you'll survive the gas attack that Iraq, that Iraq is going to do on our homeland. Uh, yeah, right. We just had three million guns just got bought during the during this pandemic. Everyone's been ramping up guns so they can defend their toilet paper fucking shed or whatever they've got. So like <laughs> this country learned is so good at like actively waking up and going, let's learn nothing from history. How can we learn nothing from history? Let's do it. So listen, I think it's a serious debate we need to have. If, if your neighbor comes for your toilet paper, do you do you murder them in cold blood? I mean, I feel like it's the it's it's both the the sane thing to do and and the ethical thing. You know, put them out of their misery because they didn't have toilet paper. So they're not living a good existence. Put them out of their misery. Well, I think you should only be able to murder them if you're gonna eat them because we should go full cannibal. We should go full just Race horses first. <laughs> Everybody, if you take one thing away from this episode, race horses, race horses first before you get into the neighbors, before you dig into your neighbors. Before you eat your neighbor, eat your neighbor's racehorse. <laughs> so I think that's... Um... I think that's a good way to wrap up 2020. <laughs> I, I think, uh, listen, I think, I think we ended on a high note. We ended on a how to really. I always like, I always <laughs> like when we give people a how to. I do like, they should, they're coming. Yeah. It's a great how to. It's like, this is how you get this done. This is how you eat your neighbor's racehorse. Like this is all good stuff. Cause I don't want to just like complain about everything. I want to have solutions and quick, good fixes and stuff like that. Life hacks. Yeah, I mean, a neighbor can be a bit gamey, so you're gonna want to marinate that uh, for like few hours in like a like a, a, a teriyaki, maybe. Don't do any research on finding out how human eating human flesh drives you insane. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. You can't get any more crazy than you are, America. Eat your neighbors. <laughs> um. Well, that's Government Secrets episode 22, cannibal episode. Okay, cannibal episode in the can. <laughs> Put in the books, cannibal can. It's cannibal can can on the Gov Seeks. Um, 
folks hit the like button uh if you're watching this on one of our youtube channels uh hit hit the like button if you're listening to it give it a good review share it out and do all that stuff so that we can keep doing gov seeks for another half of a year um and uh lee where where uh where where can people ride your racehorses <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I have a racehorse. Uh, you can pay for tickets to my racehorses uh, in uh, in my backyard. Um, there, I've, I'm unfortunately I I don't. I had to store them in my parents' laundry room for now. But uh, everybody, I uh, am gonna head out. But uh, you can look up all my stuff at leecamp.com. I have a TV show called Redacted Tonight. I think you will enjoy. I do uh, live streams as well, uh, and I have a second podcast called Common Censored. And uh, the easiest place to uh, to remember is uh, LeeCamp.com. It's all there. Oh, and a new uh, new Rockfin channel as well. Oh, check out Rockfin. Their, their cryptocurrency is going through the roof, everybody. So for $10 a month, you can watch Lee's premium content, my premium, everybody on Rockfin's premium content. You're supporting a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. They don't, they don't censor us. It's fantastic. Jimmy's on there, Convo Couch, a bunch of people. So check that out. All right, dude. Thanks, man, to 2021. See you then. See you in 2021. Have fun in your bomb shelter. Is that what you're calling your laundry room now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of good dryer sheets to munch on. <laughs> so I'll be fine. Outstanding, buddy. All right, man. We'll talk right. to you soon. Later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.